Titila Okorie is a 38-year-old housewife. Today, she sets out to check out her farm. Although the road is narrow and bumpy, Titilayo moved on with her little boy, Victor. My name is Titilayo Okorie. I live in Tungama, Jaya, and I've been here for the past 10 years. I'm a farmer. Right now, I'm taking you to our young farm so that you can see how we've been working. Titilayo did not get any higher education, but she has helped herself in many ways. She's expecting her second child, but she has six dependents. She is one of the many women in rural Nigeria who have been empowered by the government with an agri loan. She says they hire men to make huge mounds, plant and harvest crops, but all the profit goes to her. At the end of every month, she is richer by 18,000 naira, coming to about 40% profit after the annual harvest season. Since I've been empowered by the government with the sum of 195,000, I've been able to now make more than 5,000 hips. Formerly that I was working alone, I don't make more than 100 to 200 hips. So, but now I can boast of having about 5,000 hips on my own, apart from the group farm that we make. Since I've been empowered and uh, my farm is doing well, I, don't lo I no longer wait for my husband to come back before we start looking for money to cook food. Before he comes, I already prepare food and uh, we stay together and enjoy ourselves. Titi is reaping from her labors, but it is not always so. Professor Labisi Aino, a sociologist and consultant on gender issues, says most women work for the men in their lives. Old aged women in rural communities still carry firewood, ask me whether they, never, whether they didn't work when they were young. They did work, but they work for the man or the men in their lives. And because the product of that work is not negotiated directly to them because of power relations in traditional society, at the time she's about 70 or 80, she's almost a beggar, you know, praying that somebody will feed her. Because indeed, everything that the family owns belong, belongs to the man. Other women are now learning lessons from Titi Lyo. When I go out, dress up, and go into the town with my car, when I meet other women, they ask, what do you do for a living? I tell them I'm a farmer. They don't normally believe it. So they say, you are a farmer. Show me, tell me how you are a farmer, that you, you are not looking like a farmer. I said, most a farmer look haggard. That, so when they come close, they really know that I'm a farmer. Many of them are encouraged to come into farming. So they formed a group and accessed more loans. We applied for loan for support and were granted. So a lot of women among us have really benefited and it has assisted us to be able to support our husband in whatever they are doing. Women have become very, very productive partners, both in governance, development and even within their homes. You find households are headed mainly by women in many societies today, and Nigeria is not an exception. By the time you empower a woman, the beneficiaries are not the women themselves, but the entire household. And when the entire household benefits, it uh, translates to the uh, community, and then the community to the state, and so on, to the country. Once there is hardship anywhere, I think the worst hit will be the women and then the young children. The woman in the village suffers so much before you, you, before you know anything, a woman wakes up at 3 a.m. I'm talking about my community. She wakes up at 3 a.m. to go to the stream. She comes home, prepares food, prepares the children for, for school, and goes to the farm. Comes back in the evening and cooks for the family. It's not an easy life for them. And yet you find them very cheerful. They are not quarreling. They are, they are very cheerful. And I think they need a lot of attention because whether the petit trader or the farmer, they need assistance from us to bring them to a little comfortable level. Office of the Senior Special Assistant to the President on the Millennium Development Goals is making gradual progress on Goal 3, promoting gender equality and empowering women. What we've been able to do is to um, really look at the empowerment and the impediments to it. For instance, access to credit for agriculture. 
um, really educating and bringing ownership into the programs. You'll find that most of the programs we do through our conditional grants, the communities themselves are involved, and so therefore there's ownership, there's an understanding of why we're investing in women um, in that community, so that we don't create a pushback from the rest of the community when those investments come, and then you'll find that women will say, well, this is too much of friction in our community, we better just leave that investment alone. You have to bring everybody along with it. In fact, I think the advocates for investments in women have to be the men, and they have to see it as value added, and you can't do that by expecting them to imagine or know that it is valuable. You must communicate to them. Monitoring the implementation of gender-related programs and integrating women empowerment into various development programs has been huge constraints to achieving the goal of empowering women, especially in the rural areas. Women empowerment issues stretches to children and youths, as the woman is also the educator in many homes.